smoked. They knew they were smoked. They knew they were smoked. They knew they were, they were they smoked. They knew they were smoked. Yeah. They saw they it. They had board the vision. Yeah. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. Well, they, they were positioned very far yeah. back. Yeah, they were that base. Yeah. yeah. All right. Just, we summed up, up nicely. I don't know if anyone, I don't even know if the cameraman saw the or if it's <laughs> really far away. But, I mean, we kind of summed it up. That's, that's game one in a nutshell. We've actually got game two uh, starting now between Secret and uh, CDEC. So hopefully we're going to the bands and picks. What do you kind of feel that Secret should do going into game two? Any kind of uh, strategies or... Mm. Probably pick Envy here is more comfortable on, I think, or something that just suits him better and their play style better. Yeah. And also, I think put Weeha more in a tempo control or put him on the puck. Yes. Earth Spirit's going to be banned, otherwise, I'd say put him on Earth Spirit. Um, it needs to be more Weeha tempo control, Envy on a just classic Envy carry. Uh, Ember Spirit and Anti Mage, maybe not the best of heroes in the current metagame, but there's, it needs something more suitable for him. Juggernauts may be a good pick for him. How sold are you on Tusk Dazzle in general as a support Ooh. duo? I they feel like that duo really is lot. not as good now now as it used to be. It was it's like the like duo the at Frankfurt, yeah, right? Yeah. It was really good, but I just don't feel like they have the same impact as they used to. Neither of the heroes do, yeah. and especially not together. So right, no uh, spirit for him. Yep. They oh, but, but, but they ban it themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the hero that's just got yeah, tier and, still, and because it's always the team who has second pick three. banning, yeah. it, which is kind of what ended up happening at MDL, where the other team had first pick banning. No one wants to play against us, spirit, basically. I mean, the, the only nerf the hero received was to the Ags, and the, you don't pick the hero for the Ags. That's just like your late game, like, oh, I have this ridiculous Ags now, but <laughs> you don't pick it for the late game. Oh, now my hero also doesn't have any weakness in the late yeah. game. <laughs> yeah. I do think you can play around with considering giving away Earth Spirit if you get a really good trade, including a mid-hero that isn't pressured by it mm -hmm. super early. Because what makes Earth Spirit really dangerous to play against is that you go mid with Orb of Venom and you just roll in from the fog and you yeah. put so much pressure. There are quite a few heroes that can actually deal with that pressure early on. Like the Puck we talked about, you can pick Queen of Pain, a hero that I think might make a little bit of a comeback at this tournament. Um, I think it's still hard. If you even get a really a good puck, trade, you could think about even it. Even as a puck, it's still hard because if he, he's just going to roll on you. The anyway. silence is so he's not, good. And he's not going for the kill necessarily. He's just going to win the mid lane. And if you ever orb to farm, then he goes on you and you do die. So. Yeah. But if, if, if that's what rough. you're concerned about, you can do the same. You yeah. put a defensive support there or you pick your enchantress and you go mid with any creep and just annoy their mid laner. Mm -hmm. and then. Okay. So CDC going to open up with Faceless Void. Okay. Uh, same pick as they did last time. And you can see how Seeker is prioritizing on not letting aggressive have his best hero gyro like we talk about ember being envy's best hero but gyro is uh aggressive's best hero like he pioneered the way that yeah you yeah. move how you move with the hero when you get your ultimate up online so I, i'm curious blitz i mean you've played um professionally i think all of you actually have been Ten professionals in Dota 2 but if someone in your team is playing you know um say that OD, and they say like, oh, I, I'm going to go this item, and you disagree with it. How often do you actually, you know, say something about it? Like, no, don't do that, do this, or do you kind of trust them and you want to allow your team to kind of make their own decisions for how they play their heroes? I think it's like somebody told me recently, you just have to let your core players do their own thing, because they'll have a different read on the game and a feel. Kind of just understand, okay, I kind of feel like this item is going to go the best, and you're never really going to get that as a support. Mm. But the issue is, obviously, sometimes you can do something like that, and the cores don't communicate with each other, get, like, double Orchid in a situation like that. I mean, that was 15% when we go back yeah. to the board. It's, it's like, <laughs> odd. It's something that you'll bring up after the game. Yeah. You'll say... Yeah, why, why do we do that? I think it's very important that the core players, in order to make the right item decisions, the game plan just needs to be defined. Like, you need to know what your goals are in the game. And then who we're focusing, yeah. who we want to kill. Who are we focusing, focusing on what's our timing window? Yeah. When are we pushing towers? Okay, if we're pushing towers minute 15, maybe Orchid isn't the best yeah. item, right? For example. Yeah, the other point is, like, maybe you would actually, as a captain, you will actually more let the core players decide if it's not a team-based item. If the item you're deciding is, like, a team mech, based, yeah, or mech type or crimson or whatever, like, all the team-based item, you will actually... Try and convince you or tell, just straight up tell him you are getting this item. We're gonna push. But if it's an item like BKB or MKB or whatever, yeah, it's yeah. based on his own comfort zone, yeah. like what yeah, okay, he wants. That's, a good point. that's really interesting. I, I, I never kind of, you know, I don't have the insight. Uh, obviously, I haven't been a professional Dota player. But anyway, so um, yeah, Rosa. back to the draft. Can you played a Dreamhack Valencia. Uh, oh yes, yeah. I for Dream Map Valencia, and I played an all-star <laughs> match yep. where I actually went like 36 and it, and then the uh, Ice Frogs started spawning Roshan and ruined it. So on uh, do on Dota buff, I've got one game, one loss, but a KDA of like 18. Or <laughs> so, 
And I played for Alliance, apparently, in that match. Um, okay, yeah, so back to the draft. Um, Ventral Spirit, this is something that I think a lot of people in the compendium, and you guys were saying, was like, this is going to be the most picked. Yeah, it's yeah. good versus I, void uh, as well. <laughs> like, a uh, hero that can actually save your carry if you get caught in the corner. And the other thing, the hero is good in the early Ten phase is because he's very remaining. versatile. You, you have no idea whether it's a core or support. You can always switch up. Shows the secret hero a lot of confidence. core now. It can be. It can be. A a, I don't think <laughs> it's an envy hero. Oh yeah, I, I no. forgot you. You actually didn't yeah. keep up. There was a phase of about two or three weeks when it was almost exclusively played as a safe lane carry, and it was really good. Really. Uh, but then teams started drafting against it and figured out how, how to did, deal with it. How did they uh, beat Vengeful Spirit Four? Uh, I'm actually. Yeah, what was the exact shift? That's a good question. It might have been the patch of it. Because what of I the could stats, Venge got really good stats, and if he is very like you consider Venge a carry that's very fast for tempo. It's easy to help your team with aura. You you play around mm. objectives, and you're very good at fighting and zoning off the off lane yourself because you have really good stats and armor. I, th I think the way people started dealing with it was either that they got like really high range carries so Venge can't reach, or well, if you swap, you put yourself a bit out of position, or you just had heroes that could actually fight one on one. So you even if you come in close, it's hard to fight one on one with Venge if you think about there it. There are some heroes like that at can the do summit it. we saw PL lo got you're losing as PL against Venge carry. Okay, the Venge got uh, Neo Storm and Neo Neo, and it's difficult for the PL to fight against the Venge because Venge has such good stats in late game. Voker is a hero that I thought both teams would really heavily contest. Yeah. I know Shiki's been playing it ten quite a bit in pubs really and stuff. The last like 10 games I saw, he was just spamming Invoker. Secret and it's a hero that we had uh, carried over. It kind of feels like it's still one of the heroes that you can semi slash hard carry with, which is this type of player that he is. But it's also a really good tempo controller for both sides. Mm -hmm. Do you like Weeha on Invoker then? I do a lot. I think he's a good player. It's like a... I mean, how does, you know, how would you kind of classify his Invoker play in terms of what makes him... Why, am, why, well, why am I gonna care? <laughs> it's like farm heavy Ten and you don't want to deal with it late game. Okay. I think he does two things. Like, he does tempo control Five well seconds. and he carries the team in late game. Like, he gets far ahead enough that he yeah. can actually do he a lot. Farms. Do you think CDEC are kind of aware of these, you know, because you guys obviously commentate all the tournaments. You yeah. know, if like you look at like James, if you look at the draft, like how CDC is drafting right now, like I, I don't think they really care about what heroes they're playing. They're just very content in like drafting. Very, s they they want Seeker to play very standard. If you look at their bans oh in the second phase, they are banning out Ursa. Like weird stuff. They are banning out Blue. Like those Turn stuff are like cheesy pick. stuff. So it tells you that this team is not afraid to play against their opponent with stable draft. They're just worried about losing if the team does something unusual or might catch you. So they want to play the game, not the pick. team. Yeah. Yes. I think this game is going to be really hard for CDC already. I think they're more, like, in the first game I said I favored CDC's draft. I think this game they're just flat out outpicked right now. They have to find a very good solution to this. Secrets team fight is almost impossible to beat. Hide Enigma. Enigma gets a fast mech. Tide obviously has Ravage. You have Invoker in com combination with all that and a defensive support in Venge. Ten seconds. I think you have to try to avoid it. Either, if I'm CDC now, either I try to just run over the lanes and take advantage of the fact that there's an Enigma jungle. So yep. I play like super active with Ench Rubik just smoking three times in the early game trying to win the lanes, or I play hardcore split push with Because five manning just flat out won't work. Yeah, that's bas basically a better idea against the Void, because you Void mostly just wants to team fight with you, and having a lot of team fight Especially with the Tide, I think if I because when I play Void, the hero that I dislike playing against the most is Tide because he has a bigger AOE. And if you make the first move and you don't kill the Tide, it's also a problem. Nice. Or if you don't catch the Tide, the Tide catches your teammates. Team it's also a problem. So it's very hard for Void to feel confident that I'm going to jump in and make the first move because you have too many stuff you need to think behind your behind mm -hmm. your mind. Razor pick up here as well. Lanes. I mean, this is something that's going to yeah, lanes is going to last yeah. a lane stage. Time, and it's They're playing lane lanes. Yeah. Yeah. They want to win their lanes, and it's really good versus tight. It's the only way to go now. You have to if you win your laning phase, because Invoker Five has a build up time. Like before he gets levels, and he can just invoke and do whatever he wants in the fights. Once he grabs his ags mm -hmm. and stuff, you can abuse him and just run it down. Because most of the time he's going to have like four spheres so invoked up and he's not going to be able to. So you think the razor is going to be up against the invo uh, It's like one v one mid again in a safe lane this game. I think it's going to be. I guess you have to kind of put him safe. It's, it does pretty well against a tight hunter. Like mm -hmm. you can zone out one on one. There's other heroes. They could pick like an OD or something for the yeah. safe lane as well. So. But I just think you need to prioritize lanes like crazy yeah. and make it so that your laning phase is strong enough that oh. you can just get into these individual fights. What matchup would you prefer versus Invoker? Like, wh what matchup do you think that Invoker struggles the most with? Uh, OD is really good. 
How about TA? Like TA is quite TA common. TA is pretty good. I just think TA's base breaking is kind of weird. I think the like, worst matchup for Invoker is Brood, but that's banned. Yeah. <laughs> that stomps him in lane. This is the, actually the only hero I can think of that just flat out destroys Invoker. There's no other hero that beats him. Oh. So, ah. Roshan control. They, they have good lane as well. Yeah. Like, Klings is also quite good at uh, dealing with the Void. Eat an inch creep. I see original Envy hero too. Is uh, Klings still get rich fast, you know, still looking for a BKB because Enchantress will just fall off. Things can get a BKB after his first damage item or something. Impetus that... pierces BKB now, actually. If that's what you mean. No, I, mean, I think you mean that the Oh, kill, 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 killing her. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. but don't you still have enough you attack have enough from straight? You have yeah. straight, yeah. straight, straight plus trend, you're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. You got like Sol Ring, Deso, and you two shot the Rubik, and yep. now he can't steal spells. So this is really difficult last pick for CDC. Like, he could yeah. consider Orchid on Clash. But this is all out on the lanes. So like, they need to win their lanes, basically. Yes. Yeah. It's, so it's like last game, except they don't have the big team fight to back it up. And last game, they showed that they don't necessarily win lanes when they can, because they had the enchantress. They mm -hmm. had the ability to pressure and disrupt the secret lanes, but they didn't do it. So I kind of worry for CDC this game because of yep. that, looking at how last game's lanes went. So if you're uh, if you're on Team Secret, your puppy, what are you telling to your team that you need to do? Just play safe. Just don't give up. Don't try to avoid giving up silly kills in the lanes. You've got the the greed factor on your side. You're running a jungle enigma. You just need to play just safe, safe, safe. very very safe controlled Dota. Everyone else, you kind of very look out for smokes. I think keep, keep CDC on needs to be the team that is making like pressure, feeling the pressure that they need to be the white pieces in chest. They need to make the plays. They need to do something. Otherwise, the game is just gonna fall. Do you think they enough. have the players for it? With the lineup? I mean, the they lineup. They have the heroes for it. They have the heroes for it? What about yeah. the play style, the players? Who do you think is going to be the player for C CD? The captain. Huh? The Enchantress. Kill the Enchantress player. Okay. He's important. Well, keep an eye on the Enchantress then if you uh, are rooting for CDEC to uh, take this one. And we're going to go over to the commentators for game two a Secret versus CDEC. Indeed, thanks very much, James. We're here with Game 2, CDC versus Secrets. Myself, Buddy Pixel, and Draskal, and wow. What a draft we've had coming out from both sides. Both of the teams resting there, kind of putting their eggs in the basket of the Invis carries, getting the Clinks and the Weaver on the map. Draskal, talk to me about these drafts. What are, you, what, are you, what are you looking forward to seeing this game? I think the panel summed it up pretty well. It's basically a CDC. They want to try to do as much as they can during the early game. It's kind of the mirror of last game. So Secret didn't really have great team fight, but they had strong lanes. Had the ability to kind of snowball, and CDC are pretty much in those shoes this game. They they have Chronosphere, which is still good team fight utility, but they don't have near the AOE lockdown. Like you're dealing with Ravage, Black Hole, and Boker combo as well. I'm assuming that Wee's going to be going Exort this game, and not to mention, I think the Void is also going to have a much much harder time than he did in game one. Clinks is phenomenal against any melee hero, and Time Walks to get the maximum use out of it. You want to be harassed in like big burst damage, you know? You want to take like half your health and damage in like two seconds and Time Walk it off, but. We'll see uh, what he's able to get done here, and see how the lane shape up too. Looks like Xyz actually heading towards mid right now, an aggressive tri lane with the the Weaver, Bench, and a Rubik. So probably just going to grab the large creep by the off lane, and then just try to get what they can out of uh, out of this aggro lane. And the, so that's going to leave on this bottom lane that that matchup that well, we're talking about the Razor versus Tide Hunter. Is an awful lane for Tide. I was going to say Sheik is going to be alright with this. Yeah, he's the Tide cannot really do anything here. See how much mesh we can find, and, and of course Puppy on his signature hero, a fan favorite. A lot of people are going to be very excited to see him coming out again on this one, the Enigma. Team fight's certainly going to be there, the pushing power as well from Puppy once he starts coming to the lane with the Eidolons also. But that is of course going to leave Envy in this lane, and having to deal with this this tri lane of sorts that's coming out from the side of CDs. He has got the backup of Pylai die. I mean, do you expect Envy to still find decent farm here, or is he going to have a lot of trouble? Oh yeah, he'll be able to farm. It's just a matter of. Are CDC going to go for the early tower? Are they going to carry detection like dust early on so they can actually go for the dive? Looks like a garter actually has some on him. So there is potential to go for that kill. And they just need to be aware of it. Like if NBC sees the fact that the Rubik is carrying dust, he needs to play very, very passive because they can't kill him. At the moment, Q just coming in to disrupt the pull here from Pylite Die. The small camp and Garter and Q should be able to 
Do the best to keep a bit of control on it. MV's coming in as well, just to sap in some of the XP. And in a game like this, what, what point do you expect to see Puppy start to make these rotations and start to leave the jungle and enter into a lane? I think he is more content to just farm until he gets at least level 6, because if you just get the jungle to yourself, like no one's touching you, you can get 6 so fast, like 5 minutes even, you could be level 6 if you can farm, so with that being said, he goes top, really good Malthus done into a black hole, that should be at least 1 or 2 kills going the way of secret, and as it stands right now, he's even going to be able to secure himself a top rune for the team, a little bit of a misplay by CDC, and they even had vision in that area, so they knew when he was going to be uh, rotating down, but they don't get the... They don't get the rune. They're kind of going to be experience starved as well if they don't play this a little bit more carefully. Um, Puppy coming in with his army of Eidolons. Got it. And Q. Hind this up aggressive. He's moving in. I got the D ward too. That's really nice. And again, with this aggressive trial, do you think we'll see Garda and Q kind of try and make the journey into the jungle? I mean, at the same time, can the two of them... It's it, it, too hard. Like, with the support sitting here? Yeah. Oh, they're Ooh, gonna die. Yeah, they could try and go for this one. Aggressive, ready to move in. There'll be a wave of terrified by die. And actually get the magic missile onto Aggressive Envy. Trying to go for the kill, but the stun is there from the center. Q with the control will find themselves the first, but Q will pay with his life. But it looks like they're gonna find a second one here. CDC, Pilot Die will pop the fire fire. It's not enough. Two for one on the top lane. And that's exactly what this aggressive trailer needs to be finding. Uh, it was just a little bit over aggressive there by Envy. Like, he tried to go for the Weaver because I think Pilot Die was too far away to throw out the magic missile during Shikuchi, and he knew the tower aggro was going to be on him. But the thing is, since the stun came late, he was out of tower attack range, which means that there was no way that counter kill was ever going to go down. And because he stayed a little bit too long, he got stunned by Centaur. And so far, kind of line up the last hits on the board. Bottom lane, Shiki. And she's fine over 15 for 8, and as we can see at the moment, once again, right here, the tower is going to switch. Actually, I didn't end up hitting him at all. I actually just ended up hitting up the Ench instead. So maybe he thought it was going to switch and he just wanted to go for it because there was such a large gap. But yeah, either way, it didn't work out. But one of two deaths is bad. They did end up trading in the end. And he's still farming like a madman. Like he's got 30 CS. He is just a beast right now. He's almost level 6 and it's like 4 minutes into the game. Uh, he's ready for this puppy. It he is ready to try and look for some of the action. Still though, Q hanging around here, trying to annoy Pylai Dai and drops the, the lane control that he's trying to achieve here for MV. And what oh, MV talking about the man, what's he doing? He's not where he should be. Aggressive and Garda finding the kill. Puppy will pop down the Malefice onto Aggressive. And then he's going to be lucky that Aggressive is out of mana, so can't really look to commit anymore with more Shikuchis. But MV just caught on the wrong side of the tree line there and weren't they close enough to help him out that time. Seems like he's underestimating his kill potential on this lane. If you get dusted and you don't have boots, you're you're not getting away. Like even with uh, skeleton walk, he only has 333 movement speed, and then obviously you lose movement speed off of that when you get dusted. So there's no way you're outrunning a weaver. You get stunned one time. That's just it. Like Venge can't really stop like all three of those heroes simultaneously. So instead they're just gonna rotate here. Mike and yeah, Shiki. This would be a good kill to get if they can, but Shiki looking to be too speedy. And at the end of the day, this is kind of wasted time here for Envy, and he really is suffering. Nine last hits at the moment, five minutes in, and at the well, same time, top lane. Venge, while I die, gets a cheeky one onto Q. So Secret able to find themselves a kill, someone on the board, but this clinks it is going to become an issue if they aren't able to find Envy some space soon. Oh, puppy. Bye, friends. And another one there for CDC, yep. and aggressive. He's looking for Pile I die. Moves in with a Shikuchi. Hi. Gonna head himself back to behind the tier of one will be okay. The Weaver pick is actually working out so well for them. There's not really many heroes in the early game who can do what Aggressive is doing on this hero. Like just being able to Radiant dive towers effortlessly, realizing attack. that there's only really one hard disable during the early game that you have to worry about. This is kind of a Weaver's dream. Well, this mid lane matchup as well. 27 for 5, 27 for 9. Bang on with each other here, the Void and the Invoker. Interesting to see how much we can do. Obviously, we, we sort of we took well, uh, the fact that, that when Boca did have that change with Deafening Blast, but you think the way that Secret are going to be playing this game, that's not really going to be a huge issue, and he's going to look elsewhere for I think it's the more combos. about the ultimates that they land. Like, if yeah. we in Misery can get like a good Black Hole, good Ravage, things like that, the Deafening Blast nerf, we won't really feel it because the hero's just going to die. So it's going to be down to the ult usage. And as far as that goes, the Rubik on CDC, like Garter, he has a lot of stuff that he can potentially steal, but it's also very stressful to play against two really big ultimates like that. To be like, okay, well I have to steal at least one. If I mess up, I'm dead. Because the clink is pretty much going to go for him every time, and Volker could pretty much do the same thing. 
And we saw from the side CDC, a couple of them heading to the mid lane, trying to see if they can find anything. We just playing it safe, backing up to that side camp by the Ancients. And that's going to mean that Garda unable to find anything here with his smoke usage. Still though, XE getting a lot of farm here in this mid lane on the Void. GDC are going to be very happy with Envy has now. A little bit of space up on the top, but it's still an incredibly painful slow start here in terms of the farm here for this Clinks and still struggling to find that level 6 here. Yeah, and I think the, the struggle for Envy is reflected by those stats. That is, it's actually horrible, like having this start. He almost has, like, much CS as the Enchantress, who wasn't even really farming in the lane. Like, he was just kind of chilling up there, helping go for dives. And he has less CS than that. Okay, bottom lane, Misery. Okay, in comes the Chrono. XC trying to do what he can to stall a fair bit. Misery, he'll turn around with the Ravage Puppy moving forward. Are they going to try for this? They will. They'll use the back hole. <laughs> Getting them out and getting the two kills, keeping themselves alive. Aggressive has come in with a rotation. Seeing if you can find anything on the cleanup here. Misery will be able to wall this off. A little bit too tanky for the Weaver to do anything against the Tide at this point. But there's your Ravage, there's your Black Hole, and there's your potential turnaround in the laning stage. They needed that big time, especially with the two kills that they actually get. They walk away with a Void and uh, a Razor kill on top of that. Like here, they were kind of fighting into no vision. They had a, a ward near where the little ramp goes to the bottom room, but during this team fight, they had no idea what they were they were walking into. And unfortunately for that, they end up paying the price. So, nice comeback here. Buys a little time for Envy to get himself back on his feet. He's level 6. But at the very least, now he has death pack. It's going to be a lot harder to really chase him down and actually get those kills. And I'm also curious, I guess Wii is just going for the standard... Uh, he's still going for the Midas. I don't know if he's going to go for Book or if he wants to go the Yule's route. I think Yule's is really good against Void. Although, oh wait, it's actually way worse now, isn't it? Because you can just time walk out of it. That actually makes it really bad. Okay, so maybe you can only really kill like the Rubik, Ench, and, and Weaver. Those are going to be your main targets. Well, see CDC now, they've kind of settled with the lanes the other way around. They've brought an aggressive down here onto the bottom. They want to try and get him at the top of the farm game. We saw how much you can do with that. Uh, in game one on his Sven, kept himself at the top of the board in terms of value, and this game he's going to try his best to get up there. We'll be competing with this Wii High and Poker that's at the top, and as you said, now with the Midas, he's going to be able to start to work up his own net value. Secret hanging around at the bottom, ready to see if any of one on the side of CDEC does jump out. Garda just throwing out a return gush there onto Misery. Because the fact that they've got three heroes down here it is going to give us some space still to Envy, so Envy slowly climbing himself back up that board. And uh, he has now got his brown boots. I do believe that uh, Misery overall has done way better in his lane than I was expecting. Like, if you just compare the overall CS, yeah, sure, Razor has more than eyes. This isn't a crush by any means. This is, like, pretty pretty darn close, all things considered. So, if you look at the way that Envy's lane started, he's already caught up pretty much to where the Razor is right now. <laughs> so I think, all things considered, even though it looked like Top was pretty much a disaster and Envy probably didn't have to die two times, they're still making a very solid recovery, and I think that CDEC still need to be very, very cautious try to actually get something done here as well. They do have the Rubik level 6, and I think they're probably waiting on Q to get level 6, because it doesn't have impetus just yet, but once those tools are available, it makes Chronosphere really strong again. Back on the side of Secret Receive Puppy, uh, he has got that mech done. And uh, the Black Hole will be back up in just over 30 seconds, and that was it. With the combo from the Ravage, we saw once how potent it can be against CDC's lineup when they try and go for these aggressive plays. Maybe see the side of Secret look for another fight. MV this game with the kind of Sauron picked up. Uh, do you think we are going to see the Death Sower? Is there any reason why I might go Orchid first this game? Orchid's actually decent against heroes like uh, Void and Weaver because it, it yeah. locks them down enough to the point where you can kill them if they're not ready. Like that's the one benefit to it. But I think Deso is just so much better for pushing and overall just damage output. Say for instance, we talked about how they need to land their ultimates properly to win a fight. If those ultimates land, Desolator is infinitely better because of how much more damage you actually do during the lockdown. So you can just guarantee like blow up, you know, three, four heroes. There we have it, bottom lane. This could be a bit of a repeat. They've got the two ults online. They're seeing if they can catch out aggressive. It's going to be a hard kill, but they have got the stun locks with the Ravage, the Magic Missile, and if they commit the Black Hole, should be enough to find it. Aggressive playing very safely. I like dying. He has got the swap, and he's going to find it. Just bring it back. Sentry's drop. Has they got the stun lock, the Magic Missile, and the Black Hole! Oh. Yes, the
was just the tip for sure. That was insane. I thought he was gonna miss. I saw his arms go out, I was like, oh god, he's gonna miss, but just barely caught it out. And he's got like, big arms, puppy. He's got huge arms. Just look at how close this is. Look like, at that. Is not even in the animation, and he gets hit by it. That's gotta be a little bit, uh, a little bit tilting. The weird part about that too is, he actually had a ward. So I think he saw Highlight Dying Puppy walking into the side, but he still decided to, uh, around maybe a little bit too long but nice entry placement by pi to allow him to get the swap off as well but that means uh black hole down for tier one secret are going to be happy with that trade and they are just starting at farm everywhere you can see cdc they're kind of running around trying to figure out what they can do and with one ultimate on cooldown this is probably one of the better opportunities they're going to have so if they can do you find anything here gums now done on misery's tied Creds as well on the Ven. Sheiky is going to spot out Misery in the jungle, but the rest of the team still committed that push up top. They're not going to be able to do anything against the Tide Hunter. In fact, it's going to be secret going for Roshan. For the Forge, the Spirit of the Islands as well. And they've got a good lineup for taking this down fairly quickly. There's no way they're reacting to this way too fast. Easy ages here for the boys. And well, Sheiky, he's going to put him in. Some of Misery's damage. And does have the Rubik about, but Misery just backs off the tier one. They'll get the Roshan and, and Aegis now onto Weeha, and uh, this game is certainly looking up a, a little bit more than game one was for Secret at this point. They're looking really good. You see still need time before they can try to contest fights. A lot of it is dependent on, obviously, if Secret want to use Black Hole and Ravage during the same fight, they absolutely need to win that fight. If for whatever reason there's some like, execution error and CDC walk away with a teamfight win, that's game changing. And the other thing too is, what can Garter actually steal from his engagements? Can he get a Black Hole? Can he get a Ravage? Positioning on that hero and what he can steal from a team fight is also going to be hugely important for them. All right, up Exe here. Misery has got the Ravage. He's got backup as well. If he can get the range for the swap, that Exe time walk just comes back off. I, I don't think they can kill him. I don't even think chasing him is worth it at this point. All right, at this point, I mean, a lot of this down to Puppy ready it feels. The first two black holes of the game have been absolutely so huge. Farmed. Look at him, man. It's Puppy Enigma. It's he got Greaves and it's like 13 minutes in. Actually, I don't know if he goes Greaves this game. I think he might just go back for something what he did last game, like maybe go Vlad's or, or like full aura build or BKB. Although BKB is not super good this game. He'll get spell stolen from and you can still get speared. So BKB is not like amazing. I'm interested to see what he does and, and interested to see if as well. Greaves, yeah. oh, they have found XZ there with the wave of terror, but they can't I get the swap off there. Come on. No foul with the TP. I'm just on my screen at the moment. I've just got it double clicked on Puppy. We're, we're 20 seconds away from that black hole. We saw him go straight for the action as he came off cooldown last time and got the Greaves out in the smoke. He's ready to do it again, Puppy. He's going to be looking at these plays as soon as that ultimate comes back online. The Ravage has still been held onto by Misery, so that's there ready and waiting. Question of who Puppy can try and catch out. He heads towards the mid lane and came up with Pi. Still, CDC's cores have this really awkward timing where anywhere from like the 15 to 25 minute mark, they're not actually as strong as they are in lanes. And they have this kind of downtime where they need one or two items. Like, take the Weaver for example. This tower is getting pushed in right now by Secret. What is a Weaver with a Perseverance going to do against this? Like, how, the laning phase for him went about as good as you could have asked to. They were tower diving, they killed MB two times, more times than he's like ever died in clinks in the first 10 minutes, according to the stats. And they still can't really contribute to the team fight. Like, Razor is not good against 5 man, and, and neither is Weaver. I think they really needed to get way more than they did in the circumstances, and the fact that Misery didn't really lose his lane that hard to Shiki also puts them in a position where he has more than maybe he should have. So, even with CDC having the, the good top lane, everywhere else was kind of just mediocre. And right now it feels like they are more than on the back foot. They don't even want to fight. XZ just teleports away. He's like, yeah, we're not, we're not doing anything here. And it certainly seems that Secret are much more comfortable with uh, kind of the play style that they're going for this game. And Kill Envy's Clink stepping it up here. 1k above the medallion. We'll see what he does decide to go for next. Mid lane, they're close to taking another tower here, Secret. We, Pylite, spinning in to try and finish this one off. He's going to look for the deny here. Is he going to get it? Lux comes out. No, they're already going to be forcing back the side of CDC. God, they're taking a lot of damage there from the Clinks. So we have will pick up the town. That's going to be the Yules done now here on the man. And, and uh, as you said, this is really feeling like a lot of the momentum this game is all behind the side of Secret. They just don't have an answer for the 5 man. It is very reminiscent of game 1, except I feel like Secret dealt better with 5 man than CDC are dealing with it right now. And I think a lot of that also has to do with their heroes. 
Like last game, they had some way of taking fights. You know, they had high burst damage, they had heroes who could contribute in a 5 versus 5. Weaver and Rubik, even to a certain extent, Razor, these heroes kind of need a front line or somebody to actually lock down for them to really feel useful in a, in a 5v5. And all they have is one sphere. So that sphere is not like absolutely perfect, like cancels a black hole and hits three or four heroes. The team fight is just so, so difficult for them. I can see the moment we just we hug into the space up top there's a void around the rest of secret towards the bottom and on, and on top comes aggressive as well we heart is on his own here he's uh, got ages though if they go for him there's gonna hug. be time yeah gonna be a lot of time for a sick to react and of course on neither of these heroes uh, they have yeah, okay, the tournament had cat secret on it let's drain on to cheeky magic missile the sun strike there ready to dig the grave top line they have gone in with the chronosphere onto weha do they have damage he yules himself up here weha can he magic himself out of this one now he's gonna go down once here aegis has been popped now guard attending him as well has the telehesis ready to go just as ready and waiting as well weha won't be able to escape this one as the dust will be popped they'll take the kill onto the invoker so it will be a one for one trade across the board there but arguably the more important one there for CDC. Secret though, they will get themselves an objective as well, and that's a tier two down on the bottom line. Yeah, this is a, a very hard push to stop, actually. And I think that CDC are probably going to have to go back. You can't even really get the tower here. You have tons of time. I was, and how do you defend against it? You're defending against the push that's still got a ravage, and they're still got a black hole. This, it's yeah. not going to be the easiest of defenses here for CDC, unless Secret chooses to just play it safely, which it looks well, like they, going they to have, the point. They have two towers top, yeah. so they can go clean up the offlane towers for free. And I don't really think that CDC ever want to try to contest that. They're just going to make sure that there's nothing that's going to be taken away from them outside of just the fact that we died. Which, again, if I traded tier 2 safe lane for a death, even on a core, I think that's fine. Given the circumstances, CDC don't have a choice, though. They have to make those trades because they just can't win the, the 5v5. They needed to wait for a secret to maybe overextend when they're trying to push into the tier 3. Or potentially get a pick and then try to take the next Roshan. Those are the best feasible options that they have at the stage. Lincoln's is now done on the Weaver, but at CDC, they're going to still certainly have to wait for, for any kind of major physical damage output to come out from the side. And and Lincoln's fear, I, we already talked about it, the team fight, the kind of AoE control. Secret have got a lot of things to work around that, that can still, they can still kill the Weaver. That Lincoln's isn't necessarily going to be a huge saving grace for him. Well, it's nice because it's the Invoker combo. Like, that's one way you could maybe die on Weaver, although I guess you can still time lapse too, right? Because the deafening doesn't really does, stop you, you can, from casting yeah, anymore. So, and actually, it's just really bad against Void and Weaver now. But it's, um, it's an interesting game because CDC's lanes were actually very strong. But they didn't perform, I think, up to the standards that their lineup necessitated. They needed to do better. Oh, MV. He is out here. And this aggressive guard is stepping in as well. And guard it does have dust, but MV's going to be a little bit too speedy. Get himself out of this one and back to safety. And MV really stopped buying up the gold. We see him now on 3.1k. He might question, what's he, what's he buying outright? Is it, a, is it a, is Modesto? Yeah. It helps some high ground. I think that's the next logical step. It's also good against Roshan. They, all, they have mass minus armor like Wave of Terror, Medallion, Deso. All that stuff just makes you melt through heroes like Razor. Even Void can just die in a couple of hits. In that sense, I actually think Klinks is better against Void than he used to be because Backtrack used to save Void periodically, but now. If you just get hit by one disable and you have clinks on you, you just die before you can really do anything. So, the nice bit of synergy they have going. They're gonna spot XC. He's got a blink dagger. Their follow up for the sphere is just so lackluster, though. Well, what do they drop into a sphere? It's like enchantress auto attacks. You get like a static link and a plasma field, and that's about it. Uh, it certainly doesn't have the same synergy as they, they had in the team fights in the first game, CDC. Oh, last game they had just insane amounts of damage. <laughs> and we, we saw some great great combos in the first game. Yeah, but there's the Crimson and the Desol yeah, coming out. Yeah, big items. This is the I want to end the game in the next five minutes build from Puppy. Crimson Greaves. You take almost no physical damage. And the, the sad thing for CDC is they don't have any magical burst. So most of their team damage is built around physical. We're going to see CDC group up here for a little bit of a fight, but the same secret will be ready for it. Puppy Misery on the sideline. Now they're going to jump in. X gets the coin up and they're going to rally! Oh, the mother mother! CDEC and Secret were just ready and waiting. And again, Puppy with another flawless black hole. 
That was insane. Well, the rabbit set him up, to be fair. That was, I think, all misery. And the fact that XE just... He missed Puppy by so little. I, I would definitely okay. like again, yeah. All right, he's been caught out. The Yulz like, was there in time. We just see it at the bottom right at the same time. We've got to see this replay because it's just beautiful. He barely missed. Like, Puppy was so close to that. If he hits that black hole, or hits the sphere, the black hole never comes out, and maybe, maybe CDC have a chance to at least cut their losses and get out of there, but... Oh, look at this. The... There's a replay at the replay. Oh! oh! Replay in set. Are we going to get the triple replay? Can we have it again? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> nope, we no, can't no, have it. No, we can't. <laughs> it's okay. No, nope. we're going to get that $6 million tournament. But anyway, 10 for 5 at the moment. Seek... I mean, a lot better luck in well, a lot of just a lot better display of skill here in game two. And what a display it has been as well with this puppy Enigma. He's gonna pick himself up oh, a we? gem as well, so the life for this weaver is gonna get even harder. Top lane. Oh, hello. Is Sheiki? they gonna be able to get this here? Shiki, yes, they are. We. The solo pick off there. Yeah, Arab server is drunk. No big deal. Invoker. Thought you, they thought you nerfed him, but. <laughs> Not okay. quite enough. Doesn't need that. He doesn't was, need uh, that. He's got a, nice a fair combo, few other Like it was a Yules actually into Ice Wall for Spirit Alacrity instead of going for like the Meteor Tornado or Sunstrike Meteor. It was very nice. But um, Rochan's available. And that part, even just having Pi with the uh, Vlads as well. They have everything. They've got so uh, these Roche. They mean, have drums. I think they're right? down less than ten. Yeah, the, the Invoker drums has drums. Invoker. So they have every aura item that they need, and that well, has drums. They've even got the double drum. I, they don't even need pipes. No magic damage. Like you're gonna pipe Fade Bolt and uh, Plasma Field. There you go. So the biggest magical damage that CDC put together here. And I think there is also something to be said for having team compositions that have a only one type of damage. You now, if you only physical damage, it's very easy to itemize against. And I think that's kind of what CDC had here. Although if their lanes went better, it might not have mattered as much because Enchantress is like one of the the few heroes who kind of needs again that front line or a good sphere to be able to really deal damage. But if you're relying on other people to help out. You're up against like Crimson Guard and Greaves at 23 minutes in with drums and blads. You're just oh, not gonna Misery might be walking into this one. CDC did smoke up a Misery, has been caught out. Can they actually kill him? He's a bit of a tanky brute here. He's gonna be able to ward this one off by look of it. Secret R there to back mode. XE jumps in, gets the crone onto two, onto Misery and Pilot up, but they just can't kill this time. The Greaves are there for the first to pie. Out comes the Ravage now. He can pop the BKB, but he's already lost three of his friends. Only two left alive on CDC. Aggressive popping the time out. The Yours is able to control Envy cleaning up the back lines. And now Aggressive's gonna go down as well. This time in this game, the team wipes going the way of Secret. Secret. They only lose Pile I die, but it's in his name. It's his job. He's Avenger at the end of the day. What a fight for Secret, and they didn't even need the black hole. They didn't even need it. Now Puppy says, I've got it, guys. What's going on? The it's already over. They didn't need yeah. it. CDC just getting BTFO'd. The, it was the worst target to go on. I mean, they, they saw an opportunity, and they're like, all right, we need to try to go for this kill. We need to make something happen. But unfortunately, of all the heroes to catch out, it was Misery. And he gets into the middle of the team. They throw out a spear, and XE's like, I do literally no damage. Let's just kill Pilot Die. But the problem with killing him is that everyone on this team does way less damage. So now you can't kill the Tide at all because you just lost 36% of your base damage. In the meantime, Envy was just in the back line killing everyone with the Desolator that he had. And there's just not really much that CDC could do about that. They, uh, they, GG. They just say GG. All right. What is this? TI4 Finals. GG is cool, and we're going to game three, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Secret. I've done it. I, I'm a little bit disappointed. I was hoping for some more black hole action, but that, that that was nice to see after a game one where Secret didn't really look quite all there. It's good to see that we're going to have an even matchup in game three. I mean, both teams are certainly warmed up now, and going from both games, it's hard to call who's going to be able to